Okay, so just running through what we did uh, this last time in class. I guess I'll put my hypergraph down there for a moment. Okay, so I have my geometry, my nice little arm. I'm facing forward in the z-axis, okay? And I've deleted the history. I've laid out my UVs, okay? I have it named, and I've uh, done the modify freeze transformations. Okay, so all that, well, everything on the clean geometry checklist must be done before you're ready to rig. Otherwise, you're going to have to strip the rig off again and redo it. So, um, all right, so I'm going to grab, um, let's see, I'm in the animation menu set. I'll go to the joint tool. Now, for this, I want to be in the side view. He says optimistically, there, come on, there we go. All right, good, Mr. Computer. Okay, so I'm going to grab the joint tool. I usually um, grid snap these guys. This time I am going to just wing it. Oops, one too many. Try that again. So, if, you know, I just hit enter when it's screwed up there and then Z back. And so I just snap out my joints. Okay, when I'm done, I hit enter. Um, and then if I want to adjust things, if I, if I move a joint, so I'm going to just move everyone forward a little bit, okay, it takes, if I grab the top of the hierarchy, where'd that hypergraph go? Chunk. So there's my hierarchy. Everything below it goes. If I need to move the guy, uh, guy in the middle, all right, I hold down D, and then I can reposition him very carefully. Okay, and get him where I need to be. So notice how I have the angle in here. I have not used the rotates. Okay, when you're rigging, you are not allowed to use the rotates at all. Otherwise, you get error, message, error messages later on. So if there is a rotation in, let's say, joint three, tools, things I'm running on joint one or joint two, they're going to break. Okay, so it's that finicky. All right, so good. Then, <laughs> all right, so we got to make sure that these joints, that their, um, their axes, their local rotation axes, so what, which way they think rotate X is and rotate Y uh, according to their parent. So everyone, this is the rig. The fact that the joint three is under joint two, under joint one, that is the rig. If I go go like this, it won't work. It's busted. It's dead. Okay. If I if I, if I go like that, it's broken. It won't work. It's dead. Okay. So the rig is joint three under joint two under joint one. Okay. So and so because where it calculates the rotation from is determined also by you know, where it's positioned from above. And notice I do have translations here. Okay, that's fine. That's okay. We don't freeze the transformations on this guy. All right, so now to make sure that that's perfectly mathematically aligned, I go to the top of the hierarchy. Okay, and I want the X pointing at the next joint perfectly. I can tell even at that distance I'm off a little bit with that guy. But the computer will do most of the work for us. So we just go here to Orient Joint, the option box, and the primary axis is going to be X, so that's going to point at the next joint. Secondary axis is going to be Z, that's the one I'm going to be bending when I'm bending my elbow, or if it's a finger, the knuckle, whatever. And I'm going to point that guy at the world's negative X. So there's the negative, and there's the X. Okay. Great, so I hit apply, and it's good. Now what we did in class is we tidied up this one. It wasn't necessary um, technically, but when the Orient Joint Tool doesn't solve the problem for you, you still must have the Orients done correctly. So we go into component mode, we select the um, question, question mark, which allows us to change the orientations, and I just pop over, okay, I pop over to the rotate tool, and I put on snapping, 
you know, I usually start with a slightly larger number because it's a little bit faster at first. And let's see. put this to wireframe. There we go. Chunk, chunk, chunk. And so, good. And frequently you have to move it, release, and then move it again. Okay? All right, so I need a smaller rotation value there. Five. Mm hmm. Okay, so then I would line that up accurately. Then I also need to check the guy above. So I'm going to just change my selection. Okay, so his Z is that way and his Y is this way. Okay, fine. And so I just line that up, you see, like that. And I'm off. Okay, there we go. So yeah, so sometimes you'll have a whole arm or something that it has not done that. The uh, automatic tool doesn't work, and so you just have to manually go through and make sure that's right. Otherwise, you're fighting your rig, and you're not getting your job done. All right, so let's, uh, let's go through and name these guys. So this top guy is going to be shoulder. shoulder, underscore L, underscore L, and then, um, let's see, skin, right? <laughs> I'll just copy that, go down to my elbow, paste, and change it to elbow, and ah, da, 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 da. Okay, and then we go down again, and we go to wrist. Underscore, and okay, so there we have them all labeled with skin. So I'm going to go to the top guy again, and I'm just going to make a quick layer, and make sure he's added to the layer, and so call the skin joints. Skin, all right, skin, and DL for display layer. Mm -hmm. All right, save. Okay, so now, before I go any further, I'm going to duplicate that. So that's just a command D to duplicate. I'll put the duplicate into a new layer, add, and put the, um, call this guy, control. and then underscore D, DL for dis, a display layer. And I have one too many R's in there. All right, bink, bink. Great, so, and, all right, so I am going to turn off the control layer for a bit. I'll also put the color onto it. So I think I did red the other day in class for that, and then, for the skin, I did yellow. Save. Okay, so just so I'm consistent. All right. <laughs> All right, so now I have the control display layer off. I have the skin display layer on. And I'm going to skin the arm mesh to the, um, to the uh, skeleton. Okay, so to do that, I select the joints, oops, and select the joints, select the arm mesh, <laughs> and I go to um, skin, skin, skeleton, uh, where am I looking for? Oh, skin, right. And I'm going to just go to the option box for a smooth bind, and so I have it selected to uh, set the selected joints, which is the way I like to work. Normalize weights, put to interactive, and everything else I can probably leave at the uh, defaults. And yeah, stay away from the post. Um, yeah, it's you'll find it very difficult as an intro person to skin it with post. All right, so I hit uh, bind skin. Great. So now I take a quick test. So I'll do a test rotation and look at it and go, yeah, okay, that's a good place to start. And then I put those rotations back to uh, zero. 
All right, so now it's time to paint those skin weights. And um, all right, so I need to have the geometry selected, my render mode set the default rendering quality, and I go to skin and uh, smooth skin uh, paint weights tool. All right, and bring that up over here. And so as you notice, it's, it's labeled everything for me because I labeled stuff first, Maya helps me out, and it all makes sense. So basically, I'm going to set it to add. I'm going to give myself a small value, and then slowly, gently add in the value that I want. So I'm going to say that this upper part of the arm is going to have a value of uh, 1. So that, th you know, this vert, when it hits a value of 1, it's going to rotate completely with this this joint and bone. These guys I want to do a bit of a blending so they're gray and I'm pretty happy with that. I just want that tight edge there. Well, you're going, well, yeah that's tight to the white but your grays are still going down like that. Yeah but I can't, I don't want to paint the black in there. I could. Alright, technically I could. It's just not a good idea. So I'm going to go to the elbow skin and so instead of sending that weight out of the um, upper arm, all right, the shoulder, I'm going to add it to the elbow. And that's how you want to think about this and add and bring the weight uh, to you. Okay, so, so that's that. It's just hours of it, and then you test. So what I'll, I frequently will do is I'll have, you know, a bit more of the rig uh, built when I do this, um, and I will just set a key and go in time, do a rotation, and okay, and so then I can test my weighting of my skin just by scrubbing the timeline. Then when I'm done with that, before I go back to rigging, I must break the connection on that key. Okay, so that's the the skinning in a nutshell. So then we'll uh, turn off the uh, skin display layer and we will just turn back on the control display layer. I'm just going to add the mesh to a layer and turn it off for a bit. Okay, so you know you could call it mesh DL. Mesh DL. Mm -hmm. La la la. And, okay, so here in the control rig, okay, I am going to start setting up my anims. So I get, go to create NURBS circle. Okay, so I got my nice little NURBS circle there. Now, because I've already done this several times a week, I know I need a slightly bigger radius. <laughs> okay, so because I'm going to want to be able to grab that shoulder from any angle. So I want it easily visible. So that's one of those principles that my controls are clear. Okay, so I put this, I call this guy the um, shoulder uh, underscore L underscore anim. All right, this is what I want my animators to touch. So I label it as something that they can touch. All right, and so once I get it up there and I'm happy with it, I do a edit, delete by type history, I do my modify freeze transformation, and I'm good. Now I like to just duplicate that, move him down, and then I'm going to rotate him over, but on component mode because I want to leave my uh, rotations alone. I don't want any rotations in this guy. So the pivot point and everything stays where they are, and I just rotate it, and it looks like it's standing up. Great. And so then this guy will be called, of course, the wrist or hand. You know, it's really up to you. I'm only insisting that you label things. What you name them, as long as it's professional and grown up, um, I'm fine with it. So I do my freeze transformations on that, and there's no history on it, so I'm fine. And so I'll do the last one, dupe, ooh, I got something in the other one, yeah. Um, and so let's see, we just, I V-snap, 
drop this guy down to here and um, okay so I just come up with a interesting design for this oh, I keep hitting that wrong button there okay so fine this guy this guy that guy that bank bank and all right not the best icon I've ever done but it will do for now and so this guy gets parented now watch what happens when I parent he should change his values maybe a little bit anyhow um, so now that he's parented I can do my freeze transformations and make sure he's named as elbow um, left underscore PV for pole vector and I'll take the one out of the anim um, okay great so now that that's uh, uh, there we go to um, skeleton IK handle tool and rotate plan solver good and so I just click on the shoulder I click on the wrist I get my IK handle and I label it so this is going to be um, let's see uh, wrist IK handle and if you just keep everything labeled Maya is going to make sense to you and so you can do the complex things because they are uh, in a language you understand okay so I'm just going to parent this guy okay the hello keeps hiding things on me zip 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 okay over okay so I'm middle mouse button that over there and so now it's parented under the wrist left um, anim okay so any place I move it it goes and we're happy so then let's see I need to put the pole vector constraint in so I grab my pole vector uh, anim I grab the IK handle and I go to constrain and I go pole vector and I'm pretty much done all right with that so I can then take the IK handle and I can turn it off so I don't accidentally select it so you know right there I'm making it easy to only select the uh, things I need to select for animation all right and then the last thing on this part of the rig to do is I need to put in a constraint from the left shoulder anim to the uh, left shoulder skin and get that one out of there why does that still have a one hmm weird Let's... oh I forgot to rename these guys <laughs> All right. Well, I'll do that now. So, so I go to uh, up here to modify, search and replace names, and I'll search for skin, right? And I will change it to control. So, uh, C T R L through this hierarchy, and bam. Okay. So now I can take that one out. Because Maya needs a different name for everything in the whole software. Okay, and you get error messages otherwise. Great, so that's dealt with. Then, if I go and so to put in uh, my point constraint, so the shoulder follows, um, uh, the shoulder control joint follows the anim, I just go to um, constraints and point constraint and now this guy follows okay our pull vector allows us to rotate the shoulder and we're in good shape okay now I'll put that back to zero and our final steps because there's already a video of how to export the stuff out to unity so the final step I'll do in this video is we need to hook up the skin rig okay with the control rig and that's as simple as just since everything's nicely labeled okay my target object is going to be the control and then the thing to uh, move is going to be the skin so the shoulder left control is going to uh, going to be the target for the shoulder left skin so and I go up here and I'll just do um, I could probably just do orient constraints but 
I'll do a parent constraint. And so I just do that on each of them. That order is uh, important. And then we test, and the whole thing works. And I have my rig and, and my skin and the geometry in different hierarchies so I can strip them out for the game engine. Hope that helps. Have fun.